Hello, time travelers. Did you search the internet trying to figure out how to make the Windows 11 command line window smaller and you couldn't find a good solution? Here I am on Windows 11. This is how big it wants to open. This is how big I figured out how to make it to open. And I'm also going to show you how to open it so that you have your saved batch files open that size too. Because if you Google it, it's so frustrating and you're reading threads on Reddit or, or Super User or freaking Microsoft blogosphere thingy, what's it? They tell you to change the rows and columns or the font, but that's not how you fix it. This is my look of disapproval. So they tell you stuff like this. You go in here with the droppy downy arrow thingy, go to settings, go to startup, and then launch size. There's your rows and columns, 120 by 30. Oh, let's compare that to Windows 10. Here's Windows 10. Right click this top left corner thingy. Go to properties. Go to layout. It's 120 by 30. Hmm. And then if you go to font in here, all right, it's consolas at font 16. Then you down here in Windows 11, you got to go to defaults, appearance. Font size is 12, which is smaller. Font face is consolas, but the default is Cascadia Mono. I changed it. So, everything you put into the command line, whether you're typing in or you got a, oops, or you got a freaking batch file going, is always interpreted by the command line, which is cmd.exe. But on Windows 11, they got this new terminal with tabs. I'm like, whoop de freaking do. The tabs, I guess, you can make my desktop experience less cluttered, but you could have made it the same freaking size! And how I encountered this problem is that I'm always using batch file menu things because I put commonly used tasks into them so I don't have to go click through a bunch of things. Like, here, here's my editing rig. And I have my default color set to red, who cares, whatever. CDC, video, and then MKV, whatever. This is a batch file that I basically use to remux my files from MKV into MP4 before I start editing them. And then, like, there's this menu down here for changing GIFs into MP4 so it doesn't crash my video editor. And this is for removing rotation information in case when I'm filming, my phone rotates it to portrait. Anyways, bl not blah, blah, blah about that. But it really ticked me off at work because I have my main one up like this and it covers half of the freaking email box. So I can't see when people are replying to me. So one way to force it to open to the smaller window is to run as administrator. You press Windows button R, you put CMD in your run box, you hold down Control, Shift, and press Enter. And if you have user account control turned on, we're not getting in how to turn that off, you have to hit yes for this thingy. And you see it runs a smaller one. But you run yourself at risk in case you accidentally type something you didn't want to type and it wipes something out. You don't want that. So instead, when you hit Windows button R, you type con host. And you get the normal one. Can you see my look of disapproval? And I also have a way to do it with your batch files. Check this out. Doop. See, it ran to the correct size. Here's a lame example. I've named it lame example. This is your old stinky dirty batch file. This is your new hotness batch file. I drive the new hotness. Old and busted, new hotness. Which actually does it the old way, so it's the old hotness. Old busted hotness. But just to give you an idea, if you don't know about a menu-based batch file, what it does is, say I press one, because I've already configured and set it up. Shut up, Edge! I didn't want that to open in Edge! What? <sighs> it took over as my default browser, shut up! Gemini Christmas, Edge, why do you gotta be so annoying? There's my YouTube channel, and there's my old banner, which I gotta freaking fix one of these days, and there's a video where me and my son are, are playing old men that keep saying, like a sir! Really funny you need to watch that. And there's an option so I can see my IP config, and there's where I can ping Google. Obviously, these are not normal things I'd put in a batch file. But I'm gonna show you how to get an example of this batch file from my GitHub. Go to my GitHub, which I have linked in the descriptor, whatever thingy below the video screen, you know, that thing. And you hit code, download zip. Obviously, I haven't changed my settings on this browser, so I just downloaded it to my downloads folder automatically. And if you trust a download that's got scripts in that, 
you want to right click on the file first and hit properties and then check the unblock box and then hit OK. Otherwise, it won't let you run it afterwards. If you're not sure if you trust this batch file, you can literally read it in here. Like, like that. How it works is this part right here. And if you, if you want to just copy paste this part into your own batch file, that's fine. You don't have to download my batch file. Basically, it looks for a flag file and then skips this section if the flag file exists. If it doesn't, it creates the flag file and then runs itself using conhost. Magic! Then after it's done, it deletes the flag file. And if you want to learn how to make a menu-based batch file, this is a good place to start. You basically just echo out your options. You ask the user for a prompt. You checked what they typed. And if the user entered something that works, it goes to a flag that's down here. Like there's do IP config, there's do IP config. And if it passes these three or however many you have and they haven't typed uh, one of the adequate choices yet, you check if they want to exit and then tell them to go to end of line, which is the exit, which is like to exit the script. And if it passes that, then you say their choice is invalid and you go back to the flag which defines the menu you are in. And that's just a quick rundown. And I hope I didn't make anybody's eyes water over while saying that extra stuff. But anyways, that's that. The two ways to actually get your command line to run properly are Windows button R and doing con host. Or for your batch files, you have to show more options in Windows 11. Give me this menu back. I hate that. You have to put all this stuff at the beginning. And if you do that in your own batch files, I recommend you rename this part to be the name of your batch file underscore booted. And you rename it there, there, and there. And if you go to the license on my GitHub, I had ChatGPT help me write this. And I wish freaking GitHub didn't have such a skinny box right now so I could show you this. But I basically gave you the permission to alter it, modify it, and distribute it as you see fit. I may not give this much leeway on other stuff that I make, but definitely this one because I want the world to have a better command line window. And that's it for this video. If you like this video, please click like on it. And for those that are waiting for my AI videos, I'm working on learning how to make LoRa files for stable diffusion, specifically automatic 1111. Here, look at this. I even got it up to batch size 16, but I had to change some settings down here to do whatever for the memory. But anyways, that's a whole different video. I am still working on that. I don't want to rush it. I want to be able to know what all the important things in here are about so I can tell, show you guys examples. In the meantime, if you haven't seen it yet, check out the video where my son and I act like old men as a retrospective for the old meme called Like a Thur. And whatever the algorithm thinks is best, uh, tell me if the YouTube shows you a good video over in the bottom right corner for you. And then subscribe to the channel with this thingy. What's it? Oops, I bumped the microphone again. Subscribe to the channel by clicking that thing. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.